<clears throat> hey, 10 minute episodes. Well, I've done a lot of music for people, and um, <clears throat> for people, to people, about people. Sometimes it's about um, fiction. I try not to do fiction about fiction. It's just like, where is it grounded? Um, but, you know, sometimes I'll come up with a character. Sometimes it's about me. Sometimes it's about somebody else's story that I know personally. Um, sometimes it's not a narrative. Sometimes a song... Like I did that one where I, I took the inspiration from somebody who I don't know and then I showed it to them. Um, sometimes it's different. Sometimes it's... Uh, sometimes it's... A request for something like legacy um, one of my friends asked me to do this song <laughs> he, uh, he was suffering from some he was suffering from some kind of problem and it was making him so unhappy that he uh, he was seriously considering just giving up like, this is it. If I can't live with, you know, this, uh, then I don't think that I really want to keep going. This is big enough where I think I just might have to stop. And that is a very... Those are heavy tolls to be thinking about. And he's a close friend of mine. He's a really close friend of mine. And we've... We've both been to some dark places, but he had a very unusual request for me one year. Um, we have before, we've made a lot of music before in the past, a lot of really good music. Um, and we've, it's always, I like making music with him. And he's very prolific and like just, he likes to roll with ideas and so do I. And we can get a flow going and just kill it. And we can even do it slowly, sort of analyze and dissect and work on each other's tracks kind of thing. He's a better producer than I am. He's got more knowledge than I am, but he's a bullshit writer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's just... <laughs> oh, no. He's... No. He's really good. He's good at everything. Um, and he likes music. And he's great. And fart. Fuck you, Rabbi. You're getting too sappy. The song very unusual and painful sort of request which I don't know why maybe I'm, I'm, it, it is so significant to me because it was such a hard thing to do um, it, what he wanted me to write a song for him and like he told me about what he was suffering he was like if I die like I gotta kind of just want you to write me a song about me and I, I, got, I was thinking about what was going on and like I was a neuroscientist like I know like some of his problems were really sounded like there was something that I could figure out and or at least you know like maybe I could give him enough information that I could give him peace of mind that he was treatable that this wasn't a permanent problem like this is maybe I'm smart enough to be able to figure out some argument that will Maybe through the song I'll do it. Maybe whatever. Maybe I'll inspire him. I'm like I, th I really felt like there was a significant amount of weight on my my shoulders at that moment to keep my friends from killing himself. Like maybe he was on his way there, and maybe I was kind of one of the only people that kind of had a shot at stopping him. Um, I don't know. But I knew I had to do what I could. So I did two things. Wrote the song. I hit the books. Not like I'm doing now with myself. Because I should... Actually, I haven't been doing it by, on myself because I think it's stupid to do it when you're not like a clinically trained doctor about how to do diagnostics. If you just have the books... It's not quite the same thing. Like, I own the DSMs, but I also learned how to use them. Or how to use the DSM. And it's not as obvious as just cracking open a book and looking for symptoms. Like, 
you have to understand the process and what makes it, you know, rigorous and, you know, there are, there are non-robust ways to use processes. But anyways, I was able to figure out a couple of unique things from the symptoms he described to me that narrowed it down and I was able to convince him that I, well, I may have identified exactly what it was and that, that it wasn't anywhere near as big of a problem as he thought it was. Maybe it was me or maybe I just convinced him. We never did. I don't know. But I think I was able to talk him out of, out of into, back into, into cooling off and not, not thinking about the suicide thing anymore. He's still alive. As of this recording, you got fucking you piece of shit, and you rabbi, you're a piece of shit too. You guys are are the best pieces of shit to make music together ever in the world. You fucking losers. And the song was called Compañeros. Um, I guess I'll just fucking play it. I'm gonna sit here. You're gonna watch me. Recording, neither one of us have killed ourselves. And that's. That's pretty cool. Fuck you. Bye. I'm gonna do the trick. I should have just hit the stop button right after I said bye, right? No, the rhythm was off. Fuck you. <laughs>